good day. I am glad you are still on board. I initially wanted to take a short break from making these videos, but I am visibly excited for what I'm going to show you now. This is going to be a game changer. Today we are going to be talking about org mode, or the basics of org mode at least. What is org mode? Org mode is it's actually quite complicated and it's a bit complex, but its basic functionality is that of a markup language. So org is similar to say markdown. You can, you know, write some nice text with it, you can create headings or subheadings, you can make text bold, you know, you can just make it the text italic, you can do a lot of things. But there is a catch. Org mode is or was originally meant to be used as an organizer. Org you know, stands for organizing or organizer mode to make to-do lists and you know create schedules for your week or your day or your month. You can create to-do lists, you can make shopping lists with it, but there is some other functionality that we are going to explore. And there's people who use Emacs for only org mode. Like there's people who use IDEs and other editors and so on and so forth, but they do have Emacs installed for org mode. And it's awesome. And I'm going to show you precisely why. Let's, let me create a new file. Because it's, it's easier to show, really. It's called test.org org being the extension that we need and at the mode line you will see that we are in the org major mode it knows that we are going to be writing um, org mode if we just type text um, nothing is going to happen absolutely nothing it just works but here is what happens when we put an asterisk um, at the start and then hit spacebar it got bigger, that's a header. That's nice, that's cute, you might say, but what of it? Why why don't people just use markdown? Well here's the deal, let's write some more text. Now navigate to this top text, to this header, hit tab. We can just collapse it with tab. Still not sold? Let's let's do some more. Let's do some more things. We can create sub headers with two asterisks. I'm not sure, is it called header, subheader, or heading? Whatever, you get the point. You can now collapse this, collapse this. You can use shift tab to collapse all of them um, in your entire document. But there is, a there is a reason why I'm showing you this. First of all, because it's nice and you can create some nice, org you know, some nice documents, you can organize your schedule. Um, there's a lot more to it than this though. Um, and what I'm going to be showing you is we can actually actively write our configuration file with org mode. It sounds silly, but this is precisely what many people do, and so do I. Reason why, I'm going to show you very quickly my configuration. I put it on GitHub because I use version control for my config, and I recommend you do as well. Um, and let me show you. Because GitHub actually parses org mode correctly, much as it does with Markdown. So if we scroll down, this is you know this is the readme.org. But surprise, surprise, the readme.org is actually the configuration file itself. There's code snippets in here that my Emacs executes on launch. That's pretty nice, and it makes it very very easy. To actually actively control and edit your configuration because it is going to get pretty big okay it eventually will grow out of proportions uh, so with headers subheaders and so on and so forth and comments and well even links and images you can do a lot of things and it's going to make your config way easier to manage because trust me it will grow out of proportions. I already showed you how to use use package. When I started out, I did not know about use package. I did not know about lget, which is something very similar. I installed all my packages manually. My config file was all over the place and it was very difficult to find a culprit of a bug that I myself have done or have caused much rather. Now let's get rid of this. You have seen my config. You don't really care. Here's how you can insert some code. Now um, there's the snippet is less than s and hit tab you will see this begin source and end source 
and our cursor is at the end of begin source because now we can actually specify what language we are going to be inserting. The way we are going to set it up, because we can, for instance, um, say, I don't know, Python. We can do Python, and we can then, I guess I did this a bit too quickly. Um, let me redo this. We can edit the code in here. Um, I'm not even sure. I, I don't use Python much anymore. But you can insert Python code in here. But there is no like there is no indentation. There will be no completion if you have you know packages for this installed. So the way you can edit it in its major mode is by doing Control C and then like this single parentheses. Okay, like this this makes sense, right? We have syntax highlighting now. That's great for Python. Now we are not going to be doing Python. Nobody cares about Python. We are going to Elisp. Emacs Lisp. Now what happens when I launch Emacs is all the Emacs Lisp snippets from my config file are extracted into another file and this file is then executed by my um, init.el. This is how I can manage my configuration the easiest way and I highly urge you to do the same thing. We are going to be doing a lot more configuration in this video series. We are going to be installing a lot of packages and it's going to grow out of proportions very very quickly. Now. So let's actually do this. Uh, we can, um, I guess I've shown you the basics of what you actually know. Let, let me show you some more. You can make text bold using asterisks. As you can see, it automatically goes bold. So it's somewhat similar to Markdown, but the symbols are different. You can do italic. Why doesn't it work again? I'm not sure it should. Anyways, it's going to be italic. I guess it's I'm not sure why it doesn't automatically do it. You can do stuff like strike through. Um, yeah, that's that's about as much as you really need to know. Um, you can insert single um, code, you know, lines. If you just want to have a snippet or a package name, you can do stuff like this in between equal signs, and that's it. Now this is all fine and dandy, but let's create a different file and actually migrate our actual configuration to it. So it'll be easier to manage. Let's kill this. And let's move to our init.el. Um, There's a lot of stuff here that we are going to need to keep in this file and most of it will be gone. How do we do this now? Let's create a new pane, a new window, and create a new file in our Emacs directory called well, something with the org extension. You can choose the name for no and under no circumstances should you be calling it init.org. Like this should not be happening. Use another word, any other word except for init. Um, because as I've already said, this file is going to be, or have its Emacs list extracted. And if you name this file, I like doing config.org, <coughs> the end result is going to be called config.el. So our init.org would override our init.el. There is situations where you might want to do that. This is not one of them. So let's create config.org. And we already know how to write basic org mode. Right? And the reason or you can organize your configuration the way you like. You can have, for instance, um, I'm not sure, let's do something like terminal. And in there, we can have a subheading called um, setting default shell bash. Insert some elisp code. Let's go over to this buffer. Let's grab this bit. Let's copy it over. And let's edit this in its major mode. Copy it in. Close it with the key binding you see by screen key. And that's it. That's done. I am also now going to show you that I'm going to get rid of what we had just copied. And I am going to force my init.dl file to source my config.org file um, on launch. Let's save this. And I actually, I always forget the function name for this. I have it in my own configuration, so I'm going to just grab it and copy it over. We are going to be using something called org babel. Babel 
as already mentioned, it's just going to take all the ELISP out of the file and then source it or execute it much rather. Mm, here's my init.yell. It looks quite similar to what we have. And, and this is the line. This is the line you need. And you can just copy it in. Or you, you, know, you don't have to copy, you can just type it in. Allow me to put it in there. Org Babel load file and then expand file name if you are going to be using the home symbol. Don't use your personal um, user variable, your, your system variable, because you know you might be copying this to other computers. You might just want to get some work done on a friend's laptop, for instance, and he has a different username, and then you have to change stuff, yada yada yada. So this, you know, change config.org to the actual file name. But as you can see, we have gotten rid of the bash being our default shell. But we now have this, so let's see if it works. I'm going to go here. I'm making sure that this file is saved. And I'm going to save this file. Let's close Emacs. And let's close Firefox as well. And let's launch Emacs. Now, if everything went correctly, we are now going to still be able to use super enter. Um, or actually, this we are still going to be able to do, but we won't have to select the bash shell on launch. And we did not, because it worked. It worked and worked well. I'm going to highly urge you, I'm not going to do this on video because that would be tedious to watch, but you can um, definitely migrate your entire configuration now from our initl to our uh, new config.org. Now, you can't do the entire configuration and I don't recommend doing the entire configuration. Reason being as follows. Um, wait, which one? Which one? Which uh, frame am I in? Right here, config.org. As you can see, it's collapsed by default. You can have these really nice. I don't, I don't know. It's it's just really nice. There's a reason so many people do that. Um, what you are going to keep in this file is everything up until here, and everything down from the custom set variables those are going to those are here to stay everything between you can organize the way you like all of this you can organize the way you like put it in this file i'm going to do this off camera because there is no point that you're looking at me copying over stuff is there anything else i need to tell you about org mode not really we are i am going to make another video in the future about some more fun stuff with, you can do with org because org again is insanely powerful however uh, for the sake of this video there is really no need for me to show you how to you know insert links for instance there is there really is not um oh one thing i can actually show you is org bullets uh, org bullets are because at, by default you have these not particularly good looking asterisks, right? Um, and these are not particularly good looking asterisks are, well, I mean, they are pretty ugly. So we can actually get rid of them and substitute them with nice looking actual bullets. So let's add this to our uh, config.org already. That's the header, let's just call it org, and then um, org bullets. Let's insert some Emacs Lisp, and the package we are going to be using for this is called, as you probably already guessed, org bullets. With org bullets, let's ensure that they are installed, and let's configure them using um, a hook. What is a hook? A hook. We are we are actually going to go in depth on all of this sooner or later. But a hook basically means execute one command when another one, or execute what function every time this one is executed. So whenever the org mode hook is, hook is triggered, so whenever we enter hook, um, hook mode, yeah. Whenever we enter org mode, we want to also use org bullets mode. Now the way I like doing this is with a lambda. Um, it's, in my opinion, the simplest way. Org bullets mode, let's close all our parentheses. Let's get out of here, let's save this. Now to reload the configuration right now, we have to switch to initl, go to the end of this line, and execute it. And that's all it takes. And as you can see, now that it is evaluated and works, we still don't have org bullets, so let's kill this buffer. 
And let's reopen it. And we now have nice little bullets. Those are nicer to look at than um, asterisks. There are actual asterisks there, as you can see now. But, you know, it's just, a, it's just something tiny. It's just nice to look at. And yeah, you can, as I already mentioned, you can use sh um, sh shift and tab to collapse and uncollapse all of them. So this is it. Um, I'm going to migrate everything to this org file. I recommend you do the same thing. And if you know how to, then I recommend using some sort of version control because, you know, it's going to get out of proportions and you will be, you will be thankful for actually using some Git or whatever other version control software you prefer. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we are going to be taking a look at IDO, or IDO, uh, which is going to make your life a lot easier. And I am internally screaming every time I use our Emacs because it doesn't have IDO. It's a very useful extension that makes it easier to visit files, to call functions, and switch buffers, and so on and so forth. So for now, thank you for watching. I've got work to do, and I'll see you next time.